Oh. I don't know where that is. It's got some size. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh. Do it. Oh. Gee. Oh, that's fat fish. If there's one thing that you learn about moving through this country is that you have to roll with it, fit in. You can't beat this land. The young will know this and live with the land, not off it or against it. Early European exploration from within Australia was aggressive, some say arrogant, in their approach to getting around here because they thought they could conquer this land and more often than not, they failed with disastrous consequences. Living with the land forced the young to be nomadic moving with the seasons, moving with the food sources. They have identified over 20 subtle seasonal changes throughout the year. While most newcomers have only seen fit to identify two, the wet and the dry. For parts of the year, survival for the Yungle meant living within the mangrove coastlines and estuarine systems. There is no harsher environment than this dense terrain, thick with dangerous animals and big, unforgiving tides. They are also the most giving in terms of food and sustenance, and the fishing amongst these mangrove systems reflects this risk and reward element, because they are challenging to access and full of fish. Most of these rivers and creeks pour into large, remote bays, and heading into some of these bays can feel like you're heading into the heart of this wild country. And there is no wilder bay in northeast Arnhem Land than Buckingham Bay. For this leg of our journey, we'd be spending a couple of nights camping on a remote island in Buckingham Bay with a local mate of ours, Marcus Lacey. But first, Simo and I had to navigate through a shallow entrance of a fabled Barramundi Creek so we could have a crack at finding a very special fishing spot. Beautiful looking big saltwater creek. Looks like a prime location for Barra. Just got here on the uh, afternoon. Um, but we've been told by a mate in the pub where the certain rock bar is that should hold a lot of barra. So we're just trying to keep our eyes out for rocks just above water. Anything up there, Simo? There we go. There it is, the rock bar. There it is. <laughs> we've been hearing about this, this rock bar for years. And to finally get here, <laughs> we're pretty pumped. <laughs> really didn't know if we'd be able to find this place. So we'll start at the top of the rock bar, yeah. and then we'll just slowly let anchor out. Okay. Shallow running lures that vaguely look a little bit like a mullet should do the trick around here, eh? Yeah, I think so. Going upstream. Gone over Simo. Does that a lot in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. And yep, Simo's yep. on. Oh, oh, he's off. Oh, yep, yep, he's yep, on. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, it is a good fish. <laughs> Our first fish of the day come up to the top. Wow. Simo. He's active. He's active. He is active. Oh, oh lovely start. And there's our first barrel for the session, our third cast in. So there we are. That's a prime example of what we're after. It'd be about 60 centimetres. And the first three casts we got hits, and I think that was the fourth cast actually that we got one. So. Good start to this place. The, this is, uh, the tide isn't quite right yet, as suggested, so uh, I dare say we could be in for a session. Anyway, look at that beautiful fish. Just a really good looking fish. Anyway, we're gonna put this guy back because there's a few more in there. Simpson's straight back in. And He's not gonna wait for it. So there's, there's oyster rocks coming right across this creek here. The tide's ripping this uh, water through. It's bringing all the mullet across this rock bar and these barramundi are just holding in around behind these rocks and just coming up and smashing these mullet as they're being thrusted through down there. It's a perfect situation for barra to feed in. Yep, yep. Here we go. We're nearing a change of tide, which means that there's less places that the bait get to hide. So it's concentrating the bait, and that's concentrating the barra. Lovely. Yep. Oh. 
Oh, there's a nice little, nice Same little size. specimen, yeah. Some sort of youth convention. Two. Oh, another medium sized barrel. So because the water's so muddy and you sort of wonder how they're um, seeing the, the lures and how they're seeing the bait they're eating, they're not just using sight. Sight's just a very small part of the equation. The other part is this lateral line, which is above my finger. You can see it running all along. Oh, you can see it running all along down there. And that picks up on electrical impulses under the water so they can feel the distressed mullet or mullet coming past and they'll hone in close enough, then they'll use their eyes. So they're incredible predators and they've also got night vision. So they feed during the day, but mainly during the night. Oh, there we go again. Yep, there we go. I'm oh, getting hit there. There we go. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> they hit. Gee, they're hard to fight in this current. Oh, no. Not that good. Foul again. There Just lead him in there. Oh. Yep, yep. Guys, see my oh, good one, just a little one. Just a little eat. <laughs> the lightning happening behind us. We're waiting for the incoming tide to start, which we think is about in half an hour's time. Um, and that's when we've been told that the barra come on here. So we're just sort of arriving here early and we've mucked around with the smaller ones, as you can see. And we're hoping that the incoming tide brings the bigger fish. Oh yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Ah, there you go, another barra, not the biggest, biggest bloke, but in good nick, very good nick. Nice fish though, doesn't look like that tide's going to come in anytime soon and we've still got to deal with that shallow sand flat out the front. <laughs> That's right. Okay, we've got Marcus waiting on an island out the front of this river where we're camping with him. Um, we're gonna wait to high tide, but it's getting a bit late. We've probably misread the tide and it's gonna be a uh, couple more hours and we don't wanna leave him waiting on that island all by himself um, because we told him we'd be back just after dark and it looks like the tide isn't gonna turn. Um, and he might be getting some rain by the looks of it. So we're gonna head back now and probably come back tomorrow morning first thing. Simo, good plan? Yeah, yeah I reckon. Yep, safety first. All right. All right, let's get out of here. I don't like our chances of getting through this shallow stuff, Simo. So we've got an issue with the uh, engine overheating, going through all that silty mud, uh, gets sucked into the intake, and that's basically the engine's cooling mechanism. It shoots water up all around the motor, and basically the intake is clogged, so there's been no water cooling the motor, and it's really quite hot at the moment. Hoping the tide's gonna come in soon so we don't get stuck on this sand bank. And there's a bit of a storm in the distance heading our way as well, which could make things interesting. But um, first things first, we're trying to clean this intake, get back to Marcus on the beach. I mean, it's not the ideal being stuck out in the middle of nowhere like we are, literally in the, one of the most remotest places in Australia. And our motor is having problems. We have a satellite phone that we can use to call in emergency services if needed, but, you know, that's the last resort. Come on. Yeah. Oh, we're back. <laughs> we're back. We're back. All right. Okay. So we just got to wait for the tide now. Oh, where's that map? Oh, it's getting deeper. Are we going to beat that storm? Uh, if our motor stays good, I'll say yes. Is that a 
Is that a fire out Yeah, there? yeah, it must be Marcus. I think that's the island over there. Hope he's been baking. I am absolutely starving. I could eat a horse. Baked horse? <laughs> poached, I'd settle for poached. I actually think he's waiting for us to bring back fish. Um, does Pete's art deliver this far out? I'll give it a shot, I'll climb on a sat <laughs> what, what address do we give him? Just say Buckingham Bay. <laughs> yeah, he'll find us. He'll find us. He'll find us. <laughs> As you can see, Mother Nature started growling at us at the moment. The monsoon is, is just kicked in and we're uh, are now isolated to the sheltered side of this island. Marcus is going to take us around the corner of this island that we're camping on and we should find some golden snapper or, or other reef fish, but we're really looking for golden snapper. Anyway, what we're doing here is just drifting, basically, because we don't have a sounder. Drifting over a patch of uh, what we think's reef, because we can see rock coming out from the island there, and we're presuming it's going to be the same all along here. And we're just jigging these little white soft plastics. And so it's just a matter of slightly moving your, your lure just off the bottom, so it looks like a distressed fish. And um, hopefully we run into a school of golden snapper. Again, if we had a sounder, it'd probably be a bit easier, but um, hey, save we'll save up for one. There's a bit of drift. We've got a bit of drift now. Cover some ground here. Come good for us here, mate. Yep, yep. Oh, oh. Yep, I'm on. There we go. Yep. Oh, watch out, Mark. I'm going to kill on them, bro. Oh. 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 I don't know what that is. It's got some size. Oh, it's heavy. Oh. Oh, It's time to buck. Oh. Oh. Good fight, Arnie. Big Jewfish. Jew oh, 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 That is a jewfish. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got him on a soft plastic. Wow, incredible size fish. So that is what they call a northern black jewfish. He sits on the bottom and uh, they go in big schools. You can get them in 20 and 30. But that guy is thick and healthy. Lovely opulescence colouring on the top there. But we're going to put this guy back because we've got plenty of fishing to do. and. Oh, a lot of the time, if you catch these in deeper water, they uh, get a condition called what they call barotrauma, which is basically the bends is coming up too quickly and their air bladder expands. Um, 
and then they can't sort of recuperate. But when you catch them in shallow water like this guy, he's got a very strong chance of survival if you just give him a little bit of time to recuperate. Here we go. There he goes. Thanks, mate. What a beautiful fish. Oh, you beauty. Oh, such a great feeling catching an amazing fish like that and seeing them swim off. But he got me as I was trying to grab the, uh, the braided line. Fair, fair. Yeah, he's got me a few back too, so uh, we'll call it even. Marcus is on. Yeah. Get him up. Oh, 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 come on, Goldie. What is he? Yep. Yo, yep, Golden. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Easy, easy, easy. Watch out that rod tip. Got a bit of line out there, mate. Woohoo! Oh, oh, gee. That's a huge. Oh, fat fish. Tell us what you know about this fella, mate. Um, we call this one Rurucha. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Cousin for mangrove jack, eh? Yeah, cousin That's of mangrove jack. That's yeah. it. This is this is another example of a uh, top shelf Northern Territory sports fish, the golden snapper. Unbelievably sweet flesh. Beautiful. Fish. Very aggressive fish. So when you find, again like jewfish, when you find one of these, you're gonna find more of them. So we're gonna keep this one and Gorgeous. get our lures back in. Look at that chrome face. Isn't it? Incredible. Big eyes. Copper. Copper, sorry. Copper Very face. sharp gill rakers there also. You gotta be careful of. And these fins also. Generous fish. That will feed four people, that fish. Beauty. Your favourite, this Your one. Favourite, yeah. We'll, keep, we'll keep this one for dinner then. Uh, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh, oh, good snapper, Simo. Oh, oh, yeah, you beauty. Oh, I only just oh, took it. Look, look at, at that. that gorgeous fish. How succulent fillets we're going to be getting off this fella. Oh. I think the weather's cleared up enough now yeah, that we right. can actually head into the Barra Creek again, so. Um, let's do that. I got a queenie. Yeah, something's had a crack it in there too. Oh, well done. On the side. Yeah. Nice one. Alrighty, let's head over and get some barra. Let's do it. Yep. Yeah, that's what I reckon. Yeah. I'll take that back now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got him. Last one. Oh, oh. Don't let him go. Oh, yeah, just hitting some good rocks there. Here we go. Oh, oh. No, get him up. Gonna... Get him up. Get him up. Oh. Nice one. There we go. That is a young, feisty, good-looking barramundi. Prime of his life. Pretty significant fish for Yo. uh, your culture, eh? Yeah, it's a very. Um, has its own cultural significance. This fish actually holds its own law. Mm. The deeper name for this fish is Kurtunbun. Kurtunbun. Kurtun. That's the sec sacred. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every Yolo, mm -hmm. um, whether, whether you do a Yirikya, you relate it to every animal that you um, that, that we hunt for, whether it's in the ocean mm -hmm. or on land. Uh, it could be a sister, and then there might be a, you know. Um, okay, they're hesitant to eat it? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Some it could be. Um, uh, a brother, yep. you know, okay. or some maybe a Mari. Yeah. Um, but if if you if you're hungry, then you gotta eat, you know. Mm -hmm. But but to me, this this fish is my Mari. Okay. Yeah, my grandmother. All right. So when we eat this tonight, you won't eat this one. You eat the other I'll, golden I'll eat, snapper. I'll eat the other one. Okay. Yeah. So can we keep this and eat this? Yeah, Minmo. It's, yeah? it's, it's is it the right size for you? Yeah. Is it legal it's size legal for you? Legal size for me. Yeah. Yeah, Minmo. You can take it. Thank you. So this is the wrap from a tree called Wudarik mm -hmm. and you can use this for damper too. So when you cook in damper, this is the um, natural foil. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's no poison in there. Mm -hmm. I can't just pick out any leaf. I have to pick a certain leaf that's not poisonous. Mm -hmm. That's not going to cause you any harm. So the wrap, it's from a spear shelf tree. So I'm going to scrape the scales, cut, cut the um, fish in half. 
maybe cut some little bit of groove in this and then put some of this in there and then patch it up with this and then wrap it up stick it straight in the coals Yo. Yeah. sound good sounds beautiful yeah you guys eat everything from the sea basically don't you yep most uh, things. um yeah most things um mm -hmm. most that is uh that is in season okay uh, that's, all, that's... all animals you know are created for their for their existence for for their purpose we, we see that that way um they, they are created for us to eat basically. yes it's more than just hunting the animal it's about um practicing our culture so that's why we follow the protocol yeah we eat, eat that because we were meant to eat it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would leave it leave it alone. One family, one one hunter might have you know, twenty people waiting. Mm -hmm. So he he needs to get just enough. Yeah. You know, just what he need. So it's not about um, driving them to extinction. There's not many animals that come across that will take things and you know waste it. Well, that's that's the way I was brought up. Don't don't take things for granted. You know. Um, the land is there watching you. If you if you don't hunt the right way, you know all your all your gifts of hunting will be taken away from you by the land, and there'll be nothing there for you. Just to hold it. Yeah, that's to hold that flavor okay. inside. That's the natural foil, straight from Mother Earth. But make sure you get the right vines and right leaves. Mm -hmm. We've been traveling. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll be vomiting or lying dead on the beach. Yeah, Sounds like Morgan's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that taste is coming through. Mm. Wow, that is amazing. It's so sweet. You can really taste that um, leaf. Yeah, that goes through it. Goes through it. Isn't it? Barramundi. Well done, Marcus. That is superb. That's perfect. But I might just lose my mind on my shirt anyway. And if it all came back.